The email server investigation and its potential impact on Hillary Clinton if she's elected president is the focus of a new article in The Atlantic. Contributing editor Alex Wagner writes this, the problem for Clinton is that, as we have seen so far in 2016, public trust is a set of feelings more than it is a set of facts. Alex Wagner joins us at the table to discuss. Good morning to you. Good to see you guys. Alex is it November 9th yet? I know. Aren't we all counting the days? One we week from today. Red X marks on the calendar. I've got that too. So the feelings, Alex, after all this time are still very, very strong yeah. against Hillary Clinton. They are. And, and, you know, trust has always been a feeling, right? Yes. It's just that in this day and age, when we have such a fracturing of the, the news and information and media landscape, it's almost impossible for a candidate or a leader to find some sort of universal platform on which they can regain or gain public trust. So where does it come from? Where does the lack Distrust of public, you know, I think um, there, there are a number of sources probably, Charlie. I think when you talk about Hillary Clinton, certainly her husband's record for the progressive base of the Democratic Party, I think, is, a re is an area of great skepticism. What will she actually... Was this sure, of course. And the third way sort of triangulation of Democratic politics that was a hallmark of Bill Clinton is really not where the Democratic Party is anymore. I mean, it has shifted dramatically and, and pretty precipitously to the left. So I think there's skepticism on the left about what kind of leader Hillary Clinton will actually be if she's in the White House. And then I think that there's just an accretion of years of mistrust on the, and, and on the right and in, to some degree in the center about the various scandals that have plagued the Clintons in their time in public life. And are you hearing whisperings even in, even in her own party? Yeah, I mean, I think what happened last week, we were treated to another batch of WikiLeaks stolen emails from John Podesta's account, which reflect a serious amount of consternation inside her own campaign about how she handled the email scandal when it first broke. That is not good if you're thinking about what does a Clinton administration look like and how does it function. But you also heard some, I'm not going to say saber rattling, but discontent content from the progressive base about who she's actually going to appoint in key positions in the Treasury Department, what she really going to do on TPP. That is a new thing. Up until now, I feel like Democrats have basically sort of held their fire and said, let's deal with it on November 9th if she's elected. Now you are starting to beginning, you're beginning to see the sort of green shoots of maybe some dissension within the party. But does this disclosure by the FBI director almost guarantee that if Hillary Clinton were to be elected, that her administration, even its beginning days, would be plagued by investigations. Nora, if we are still saying the words Vince Foster, if we are still saying the words Whitewater, if we are still talking about Kenneth Starr, who's in the New York Times today, this scandal is very uh, controversy, whatever you call it, is going to almost certainly plague the beginning I mean, days. I mean, you wrote, you wrote a, Whitewater, which was a, during the, before the election, was continued after the election. Decades ago, right. right? I mean, this, even if it is not a matter of actual investigation, the public interest in this, and I would say the cer certain folks on the right wing, their interest in stoking this as a continuing story is, is not, is certainly well, not dead. it's just dim. the fact that this close to the election, we're even talking about Anthony Weiner and Hillary Clinton in the same campaign. It's, it's one of those things when you first heard it, you went, what? I literally, I mean, it was a sort of mic drop moment, but yes. not in a good way, Gail. Yes, I could yes. not, I mean, I will give you this election of 2016, you are not boring. It has been a constantly <laughs> changing weather pattern. The fact that Democrats are forced to say the words, Anthony Weiner, 10 days, nine days yeah. before an election is not where the party thought it was going to be. And allegations of men behaving badly. Absolutely. In both parties, dominating much of the discussion. Absolutely. And I think it's a reminder for women that when you have women in positions of power, allegations and swirl of sexual assault are definitely not as frequent, are they, Nora? There you go. It's true. No, they are Thank not. You. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> no, no, they are not. Charlie's like, answer I question. am not. I don't have a seat. <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> Where will you be on election night? <laughs> <laughs> I will be watching the return. <laughs> right here on CBS. Yes. Thank you, Alex. Of course. Thank you, guys. Uh, her, her article in The Atlantic magazine. Uh, CBS News is getting ready for election night one week from today. We'll bring you all the election results from right here in Studio 57. You can see our decision desk set up right behind us. Our election night coverage starts Tuesday, November 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central. And you can watch all day on our streaming network, CBSN.